You're an on-site manager and you're worried about what the banks are thinking right now during this whole pandemic, how they're going to be reacting to your loan and what to do and how to prepare for this whole saga that we're all going through. Here to explain that is Mike Phipps from Mike Phipps Finance. Thanks, Christine. Um, certainly when the pandemic first hit, um, the banks decided that they would give people what were basically a repayment holiday on their loans if they needed it. Um, some banks actually did that as a blanket policy. The Commonwealth Bank, for example, just stopped repayments on all business loans. Mm. You didn't have to ask. In fact, you had to opt out of the stop payment. Oh, um, I'm and, generous. And I think the CBA to be congratulated for that. The other banks followed suit. Um, What's happening now is that people are coming off those repayment holidays. Our experience suggests that most of our clients are having no problem meeting their commitments. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, some are voluntarily going back to principal and interest repayments. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting is that the regulator, uh, the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, just to drop a, a long-winded bureaucracy, um, have told the banks that they simply can't play hardball. Mm -hmm. They can't arbitrarily... Uh, move against clients who can't meet their obligations because of COVID. Mm. Obviously, if you were performing poorly before COVID, you can't really hide behind it now. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that for the first time in my career, I'm seeing regulators tell banks that they can't be unreasonable with people who can't meet their obligations. Mm. Uh, if you think about it, that makes really good sense. The last thing we want is for the banks to act against a whole a whole bunch of businesses and have those businesses go to the wall. Exactly. It, it would it would be catastrophic and, and it would mean values in the industry would, would certainly And climb. it would bring the banks down as well. Um, they'd lose a lot of money. So um, we're not seeing any activity within the banking industry that spooks us at all. Um, we're certainly seeing banks wanting information and I think that's that's a fair enough call. Mm -hmm. um, we're encouraging our clients to, to go back to meeting their repayments if they can, even voluntarily because it's a really fantastic look. Um, if you're on a repayment holiday, holiday and you voluntarily meet your payments, um, your standing with the bank has to improve. Um, but in a nutshell, if you're an operator losing sleep over the bank coming for you, mm -hmm. um, I'd suggest you can sleep pretty well right now. That's great news. So like everybody else in the industry, another supportive group is backing this business. But, you know, it has been a very solid business through the years. So stay strong. We'll make it through this. How have the banks been impacted by these differences and the changes brought on by COVID? I can only speak uh, to the accommodation sector because that's where we operate. So we operate within management rights, motels, caravan parks, assets of that nature. Um, I'd have to say the banks have been outstanding. Mm. Um, the support that we've seen for our clients uh, has, has been terrific. Um, very different to the GFC. Um, people want to compare this with the GFC and I think that's dangerous. Um, the banks this time around uh, are being very soft in their approach with people that are, uh, are impacted by COVID. Um, although, I, I've got to tell you, within the management rights industry particularly, mm -hmm. people who even took repayment holidays are back on repayments and in fact are catching up on the payments they missed mm -hmm. because they've really only probably suffered a downturn for the last, for, for maybe four or six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, in other businesses, I, I really can't say. All right, Mike, the big question. If I'm an on-site manager and I'm looking to sell my property, what do I do to prepare my property, my complex for sale? Great question, because at the end of the day, Christine, what we are provided by you and the vendor it forms the basis of what we present to the bank. Mm -hmm. um, and the more information we've got, the better. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a valuer who's now retired in this industry that always said that uh, certainty equals value. Love him. And mm -hmm. we believe that is the case. So if I'm a vendor, and, and, and you know, I just put myself in the vendor's shoes, I'm going to provide as much information as I can to make my property look less risky than anything else on the market. If that means I've got to provide historical financial statements, I will. Mm -hmm. uh, if it means I've got to provide minutes of meetings showing that the body corporate love me, mm -hmm. um, I will. Now, all of this information is readily available throughout the purchase process, mm -hmm. but providing it up front means that you start with, you know, on the front foot and with most strength, likely yeah. to attract uh, a, a, high, um, a high multiple. Mm -hmm. 
if you have been affected by COVID, um, then our advice is most certainly get three years numbers done um, to demonstrate what the ongoing sustainable net profit of the business is. Um, and if you've put uh, strategies in place um, to, I guess, COVID proof your property, get those strategies out. Um, show, show buyers what you're doing about it. Um, those are the key things, but buyers are nervous. Um, and they're nervous because they're hearing so much negative press. If you can allay those fears and that nervousness through you know, providing information, then as a vendor, I think that's the way to go. I'll put on my little hood and the ball. If you had that crystal ball and you could look into the future, what do you think it's going to be bringing? It's all guesswork, Christine. We've never seen circumstances like this before, certainly in my lifetime, um, and I doubt that we'll see them again, um, hopefully not Fingers in my crossed. lifetime. Yes. We think interest rates are going to remain very, very low for at least the next three years. The Reserve Bank have indicated there's no expectation of a cash rate rise anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see variable interest rates fall into the ones mm -hmm. uh, before much longer. Commercial ra rates are in the twos now. Uh, so I think in terms of the economy, we're going to see a slow recovery. I mm -hmm. think the, the so-called V-curve recovery isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a slow, steady uh, progress, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, you can't pump $350 billion worth of liquidity into the, an economy of our size and not have some impact at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but we think it'll be a fairly soft landing. As far as management rights go, uh, again, I think the business model is so strong and so resilient that we are just going to continue to see buyers looking at that business. I mean, if you look at, let's say you're tossing up between a management rights and a coffee club franchise. Exactly. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not singling out coffee club, but um, I know which one I'd go into based on uh, the impact that those two businesses have seen during the last three months. Well, you've heard it from an expert in the business, one of our industry experts. And if he's investing and getting 20% back on his investments, shouldn't you? I'll see you soon. Let's be honest, COVID-19 has hit and it's affecting all of us in the management rights industry. We're here with Trent Peavy of Peavy Lawyers, who's going to walk us through the trends that are happening in the industry through our transactions. Thanks, Christine. Uh, yeah, it obviously threw the cat amongst the pigeons back in March when uh, the pandemic hit. And once we got over the initial shock of it and there was a wave of termination after termination, especially in relation to short term buildings because yeah. of the uncertainty, um, it has now settled back into a, a, a more consistent pattern, one that is inspiring more confidence. And we are mm -hmm. seeing the banks start to step back in and, and, and fund these businesses again for you know, on the basis of what they are. You know, they're good, valuable uh, investments are relatively safe uh, and, and designed to provide a long-term steady income. Um, certainly short-term letting buildings, uh, we've not seen as many of those transact, but uh, we are starting to see those, those cogs moving again and we're very optimistic. That's in, good to hear. We're very optimistic in 2021 that mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a big year in that. Uh, probably the biggest thing is, is that there's going to be a pent-up demand. In every given year, there is X number of sellers and X number of buyers that want to to want to sell or buy a manager rights. Mm -hmm. um, many of those have been frustrated during the past uh, several months because of COVID-19 mm -hmm. and they're going to still all be there but probably in uh, many more numbers trying to get their hands on the same amount of stock. Um, the other big trend that we're seeing is that the time frames in a transaction are being dragged out much longer. Yes. So it's about sellers being especially patient but also buyers too. Uh, part of that is that complication with the financing and the uncertainty that comes around things. But uh, the good thing is, is the industry has reacted really well in terms of getting everybody together and, uh, and, and finding out each other's opinion on how we can make this work. At the end of the day, we act for just as many sellers as we do buyers. Mm -hmm. So coming up with a framework and a solution that is going to enable a fair transaction to happen has been paramount. Uh, to see this through. And I, I certainly commend the accountants in the industry as well as the finance brokers mm -hmm. and the valuers for doing that. Um, the other thing that I think, uh, the, the final thing I would say in relation to trends that we're seeing is people thinking outside the box more um, mm -hmm. when it comes to selling their business right now. Um, that might mean actually going and approaching your body corporate first as opposed to typically leaving it to the tail end of the transaction. Mm -hmm. um, looking at things like a vendor finance component, 
um, or structuring things in a different way that uh, we can delay the settlement date but still get certain things ticked off now and give buyer and seller confidence that both parties are working towards a sale, albeit in a longer time frame than usual. Um, that aside, we're still there, we're still working hard, we're still trying to get as many things across the line as we can, we're still trying to protect our clients' interests as much as we can. Um, COVID-19 or not, uh, the industry is demonstrating that it can prevail. That's fantastic, Trent. So COVID or not, it is not business as usual, but it is business and it is moving forward. So as long as you have allies like Trent to get you through this process, then we'll keep on trucking. the ever-present topic of COVID-19 and how it's affecting the management rights business. Here to talk about the heartening information in regards to long-term letting or permanent let complexes is Tony Rossiter from Holman's Accounting. Tony, give us some good news. Yeah, thanks, Christine. Uh, certainly the last six months have been a real whirlwind for us in the um, management rights industry. Um, you know, right when COVID was, um, was announced and the pandemic was announced, um, border closures, businesses um, closing, etc. cetera, you know, we, we were right, rightly concerned about yeah. how that would impact on, on the industry. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately for, for long-term letting, you know, we're now six months down the track. A lot of the uncertainty has now been resolved mm -hmm. and we, we've got a good feel for how the, the, the mm. industry has been impacted. Mm. <clears throat> Early on, um, the professionals got together, um, the accountants and lawyers and valuers, and worked out a process for um, dealing with COVID mm -hmm. in the context of financial verification. Um, and that involved really um, developing a process of drilling down into the business and understanding mm -hmm. how COVID would impact mm -hmm. um, in long-term letting. That presents itself in, 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 in the form of um, you know, increased vacancy rates, mm -hmm. maybe increased rental arrears, uh, maybe there are tenants who have looked to renegotiate their rents and paying part rent or paying off their rent over time, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And certainly early on, there's a lot of concerns, um, particularly when um, governments came out and said, we're gonna guarantee that tenants you know won't be evicted that's right um, that was a scary thing to hear <laughs> absolutely scary from the, from the perspective that you know there was concern that some ten tenants would take advantage of that stop mm -hmm. paying rent and effectively squat in an apartment mm -hmm. um, and certainly some tenants have tried they gave that it on. a go <laughs> yes um, but a good management rights operator has the tools in place to to deal with that and have dealt with it now mm -hmm. and really I would say that's behind us. Um, in our practice, most of what I do is financial verification. And since COVID, um, really, I've spent um, probably 95% of my work on long-term letting management rights simply because that sector of management rights has continued almost un unaffected. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've done a lot of investigation into long-term letting right. properties and there's really minimal impact mm -hmm. on the majority of properties. There might be a little uptick in, in vacancy rates, mm -hmm. um, but it's almost negligible. And the impact on profitability is almost negligible mm -hmm. as well. Um, there are one or two properties, to be fair, um, that have, have been affected. Mm -hmm. Normally what I'm seeing is um, city, Brisbane city, mm -hmm. uh, city fringe properties um, where there are higher rents um, and the demand has, has fallen away. Mm -hmm. um, they've been in, in, impacted with higher vacancies and a requirement to renegotiate down those rents, mm -hmm. which are impacting on those th their profitability. And also buildings where they might be relying on a high percentage of international student tenants. That's right. So they've yes. all head back to the country they come from. Mm -hmm. And so that's created a big void. Um, and those, um, those buildings have found it difficult mm -hmm. to, um, to replace those vacancies. But that would be a very small mm -hmm. percentage of total long-term management rights. And the average complex out in the suburbs, you wouldn't even know that um, you know, there was a pandemic. Um, you know, rents have continued, vacancy mm -hmm. rates have stayed low. In fact, many of them are, are continuing to increase rents and profitability is increasing. So it's a, it's a real good news story. Um, mm -hmm. As I mentioned, our focus has been you know, drilling down into these businesses and really understanding um, you know, the impact, mm -hmm. which again is minimal, 
and also a requirement for the bank and the valuer is to prepare a projection. Um, mm -hmm. And in our practice, we've chosen to prepare what we call sensitivity analysis. So mm -hmm. we'll prepare a projection, which will look at how the business profitability might look over the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure about you, Christine. Certainly, I'm not game to try and work out how the economy... I and don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what we do is we look at different scenarios. So what if the... Um, the average rents and the vacancy rates stay the same as what mm -hmm. they have been over the next 12 months. What would that look like? Mm -hmm. We'll then do a scenario that says, well, what if the vacancy rate increases by 5%? Mm -hmm. How will that impact on the profit? What if um, rents drop by 10%? Mm -hmm. How will that impact on profit? And we'll, we'll do a series of um, projections mm -hmm. that we provide to our client. They can then look at what the best case and worst case scenario mm -hmm. is and make an informed decision about the business they're buying. Um, and certainly the bankers and the valuers uh, appreciate that mm -hmm. um, and are able to um, yeah, confidently then you know, lend money or you know, provide a valuation, understanding that really the worst case scenario is not that bad exactly. in a long-term letting concept. Good to hear, good yeah, to hear. Yeah. So there you go, other than student accommodation and very high-end properties, the words from Tony Rossiter are negligible, the effects of the whole pandemic in regards to permanent letting. But if you're buying a new complex, be sure you do get a hold of Tony because he will equip you with the information which will give you a tentative forecast of what you might come to find in the future and equip you to make a better informed decision. So thanks again, Tony. On the topic of COVID-19 and short-term or resort complexes. Yes, it, the outlook is looking pretty bleak, but here to give us a good broad spectrum analysis on what's going on in the industry today and to give us a hope and a future is Tony Rossiter from Holman's Accounting. Thanks, Christine. Certainly, um, the environment in short-term letting and management rights has been really challenging over mm -hmm. the last six months. Um, you know, it's, um, it's very clear that you, you, you shut the borders, you um, mm. shut down for a period, your movement um, mm. even within the state, um, that's going to impact on short-term accommodation and mm -hmm. um, virtually every short-term uh, letting business during that period of April, May, when there was almost total shutdown, they had no business. Um, so, you know, they've made no profit during that, that period or very little. Mm -hmm. um, many have, um, have lost money during that period. Uh, fortunately, the government's come out with a whole range of incentives, JobKeeper and cash flow Boost, which have supported those businesses, amongst others. Um, and I'm happy to say I'm not aware of any um, management rights business that's gone to the wall over the last mm -hmm. six months. And that really... Um, says a lot about the the strength of, of the industry. I mean, the Solid worst, industry, yes. yeah, the worst possible trading conditions we could ever have, mm. um, and in fact, recessionary conditions, mm. and, um, and and no management rights have gone to the wall. So the, the real um, challenge, I guess, at the moment is understanding how the industry is going to recover. Mm. And there are some some really good green shoots out there. Mm -hmm. um, our client base covers mainly southeast Queensland, but also beyond. Mm -hmm. And certainly there are areas um, like the Sunshine Coast in areas like Noosa, mm -hmm. um, further north up at Harvey Bay, where our clients are reporting September this year, so this month just gone, was actually a better outcome than exactly. September last yes, year. Yes, yes, um, this regionals. So, yeah, yes. absolutely. So they're obviously benefiting from intrastate travel, mm -hmm. so you know the drive market. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the islands as well, um, you know, Stradbroke Island, some of the properties there are reporting strong trading figures as mm. well. So, um, yeah, there are some, some good signs there, but generally it's tough. When you close the border to greater New South Wales, mm. to Victoria, to New Zealand um, and other international tra mm. travel, particularly at this time of the year where, you know, businesses are relying on that sort of travel, mm. um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be tough. Um, mm. Having said that, you know, 
the signs are that we're you know, moving through this phase of the pandemic mm -hmm. um, out the other side, hopefully over the next you know, period, mm -hmm. it might be another three or, or six months. Um, and the business will bounce back quickly. Um, we saw that when the Queensland border opened uh, for a short period of time, and there was just a flood of bookings that they came through to our to come clients. Here. <laughs> um, and many, many operators have got, still got very strong bookings over Christmas mm. um, and, and, and into the new year. So um, as soon as those borders open, um, I expect it will be business as usual mm. pretty quickly. Um, the only rider I put on that is the, is the fact that the broader economy is obviously um, struggling. Mm -hmm. um, we're currently in a recession. Um, that hasn't happened for 30 years. Right. We've forgotten you know, what impact that might have on, have on the general business environment. But mm -hmm. as I say, if forward bookings are anything to go by, um, short-term letting resorts particularly mm -hmm. are looking pretty good um, for as soon as the, you know, the border restrictions, etc., are lifted. It's going to be great once it finally happens. But this probably is a really good time to introduce new income streams into a complex that isn't taking advantage of the maximum income that they can generate. For instance, to give their business owners or their investors an additional break in terms of income, electricity? Electricity costs have really come down and a lot of operators are coming in and offering owners a much reduced price. Installing internet, are there other sources of income that they can actually start putting into place now that will benefit both the investors and the on-site managers in the future? It's an interesting question and, and hard to know exactly how things will play out. But you know, what I can say is it's a very dynamic industry mm -hmm. and, and um, operators are of the main you know, dynamic individuals and, and, and looking to make the most of you know, a, a tough um, situation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't want to take advantage of their unit owners and, and looking for um, opportunities that are a win-win, both for the management rights operator and for the unit owner in generating income. And a good example of you know, how a lot of properties have, um, have managed to achieve reasonable results is in short-term letting where, you know, that period where there was just no bookings at all, you know, a lot of operators would get um, longer term bookings right. into their apartments. Mm -hmm. So at least they got some income flowing to the unit owners in a period where otherwise there would be no income at all. Hmm. Well, there you go. Queenslanders are known for being able to pull up their bootstraps and keep on going. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to weather the storm and come out much stronger in the end. Begin with the end in mind. You're eventually going to sell your management rights. What's bundling and how's it going to be of benefit to you in the future? Let's hear from Tony Rossiter of Holman's Accounting. Thanks, Christine. Certainly bundling is something that's a concept that's really close to my heart. Um, it's a concept that was introduced probably about well, it's going on six years now, um, and came out of the rewrite of the legislation back in 2000, December 2014, um, which allowed management rights operators to really negotiate what charges um, they were charging to their unit owners mm -hmm. and the format in which they presented those charges. Uh, historically, the charges were developed probably 35 years or more ago now, and some of them are just redundant. Mm -hmm. um, things like a postage and petties charge. Um, uh -huh. What is petties? Um, Do we you know, post anything anymore? It's all email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, there's a range of those sort of charges. There was also some some uh, fundamental issues around um, an advertising levy and how mm -hmm. that should be charged and how it should be presented in a profit and loss statement. So um, we took the opportunity um, back in you know, 2014 to look at ways in which we could modernise that schedule of charges. And one of the outcomes of that was this concept of bundling. Um, in short, it involves uh, taking a, a number of charges. It might include the advertising levy, the uh, credit card uh, charge levy, um, the old PABX system charge, mm -hmm. um, postage and petties charge, and bundling them all together uh -huh. into one fee, which we'd often call a, a service and administration fee mm -hmm. um, and charging it as a percentage of turnover of mm -hmm. the, the, um, the apartment. Normally it was around six to eight percent. Mm -hmm. So the unit owner was no worse off. Um, they're still paying 
roughly the same fees, um, but it just simplifies the whole process. The other big advantage, both, both for the management rights operator and the unit owner, is it's helping align the outcome um, for both parties mm -hmm. in that um, ultimately the management rights operator will earn more income if they deliver more room nights and mm -hmm. increase the, the revenue mm -hmm. of the unit owner's apartment. And really? by doing that, yeah. the unit owner receives more income as well. So yeah. it's a real win-win yeah. outcome, along with simplifying a lot of the paperwork, mm. essentially. True. Okay, now it's really important to know that you can't just add these expenses on or bundle it yourself. It's very important to find out how to structure this into your agreement. So be sure you get a hold of Tony Rossiter of Homans Accounting to make sure it all goes well. Thank you. Making extra money on your management rights. How do we do that with internet? Tony Rossiter of Holman's Accounting, tell us. Good question, Christine. And, and really the a our answer to that depends on the type of management rights that we're, we're operating. Uh, in long-term lending, um, we've seen over the last four or five years a real um, new um, introduction of, of internet as a new income stream. Mm -hmm. um, Typically, it's new buildings that have um, the internet infrastructure built into the spine, I think they call it, mm -hmm. of, of the building. Um, and importantly, agreements giving the management rights operator the right to, um, to manage that facility, mm -hmm. um, to charge um, the, the tenants for in, in internet, um, and, and to manage that whole process. And um, a lot of uh, buildings are now generating substantial income from from uh, internet that weren't previously um, seeing that Great level news. of income. Yeah. Uh, in short-term lending, um, it's a, a different different process. Um, often the internet is charged to the unit owner. Uh, again, it can be real lucrative um, and, and generate income for the short-term lending business as well. Okay, grow your profit and loss statement, make that income rise by sticking in some internet. Thanks so much for tuning in. Surviving COVID-19, what you can do as an on-site manager to increase your occupancy and market your rental pool out to the world. Here we have Stephen West of Accor, who is currently the strata manager for over 60 complexes throughout Australia. Stephen, give us that great advice. Christine, how are you? I'm well and looking forward to this for a while now. Thank you very much. COVID's presented challenges that we haven't really faced before. It's new to everybody mm -hmm. and it's evolving as well. Uh, we're lucky in Queensland not to have had a second wave at this stage. Yeah. I'm noticing some great advice coming out from industry bodies such as ARAMA. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a, a, an exceptionally good um, uh, webinar that they produced yesterday. Uh, a lot of information coming out from the government. We're already up to stage five, so it's very important for uh, resident managers to stay in front of what is required as far as common area facilities, mm -hmm. opening them, working with their body corporates, mm -hmm. um, allowing their committee to make recommendations as far as opening facilities, mm -hmm. and also um, ensuring that the message going out to guests staying with you, that they will be taken care of, that there is a safety uh, plan in place that there are that you are using checklists for cleaning. Um, also, as well, a lot of the cleaning companies are providing a lot of information about products that are being introduced yeah. into the marketplace. They're doing a lot of deals on sanitizers and products. Um, but it's it's awareness of what's happening, but it's an ever changing market as well. So uh, as far as far as COVID goes, so you really do need to keep on top of that information. Excellent words. Basically, the whole situation is consistently evolving. So the important thing here is to keep your hand on the pulse and make sure you stay informed. Thank you so much, Stephen, for enlightening us and bringing um, all that information in front of us. Today. And keeping your hands washed. That's right. <laughs> Wash your hands, stay safe. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.